All right, Mark, thanks. He is a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist and author. He was the senior national affairs writer for the Wall Street Journal and spent years writing about the United States' use of power. While he was hard at work, Ron Suskin was feeling powerless at home. His three-year-old son, Owen, stopped talking, stopped eating, and was regressing in almost every way and was later diagnosed with autism. Interestingly enough, though, Owen slowly began communicating again through his love of Disney movies. So Ron is here this morning talking about his book called Life Animated, a story of sidekicks, heroes, and autism. Ron Suskin, welcome to our show. It's Thanks great so much to, for coming great in. great to be here, Heather. You know, you spent your career writing about other people, mm -hmm. uh, politics, other people's issues. What mm -hmm. made you finally decide to write about what was going on in your own home? Well, you know, this was the book that was behind all the other books. You know, five best-selling books about presidents, foreign leaders, and whatnot. And finally, my wife said, you've got to write the real story of what was really happening in our lives. They drove all of that. And that was what was happening in the basement uh, with this extraordinary drama of our son who vanishes and then finds his way back to the sunlight through Disney movies. We, we like Disney like anyone else, but we had to live Disney to get to him, to touch him, to talk to him. Let's talk about Owen. What happened shortly before he turned three? Well, he, he regressed. It's regressive autism, so he kind of vanishes on you. He's chatting away at two, I love you, let's get ice cream, and by three, he's down to one word and then none. Mm -hmm. So he went silent. And for a year in the silence, the only thing he loved was what he loved before was watching the Disney animated movies of that period, Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin. And suddenly we realized as the years passed that he was memorizing them all as sound alone. And if you threw him a line, he'd throw you back the next line. So we realized we'd have to speak in Disney dialogue. There was no other way to communicate with them. Give me an example of that. Because when we're talking to a three, four, five-year-old, we're giving them directions. It's time to go to bed. Let's have lunch. Mm -hmm. What was the conversation like with Owen? Well, I mean, you know, when it's time to go to bed, we'd have to talk about Dumbo sleeping in the tree. When it was time in the morning to walk the dog, we'd have to do 101 Dalmatians with actual lines from the movie. And his first exchange with me, I was Yago, Gilbert Godfrey uh, from, uh, from Aladdin, and he was Jafar. I said, oh, and how does it feel to be you? And he said, I love the way your foul little mind works. That was our first conversation. Wow. Yeah. Was this exhausting as a parent? <laughs> well, yes. I mean, you know, uh, you know, we had to become experts in Disney. I mean, there are 50 animated movies since Snow White in 1937. Each one of them has something in them that we could find a way to work with. So we play, we call them the basement sessions. The whole family, he has an older brother too, we would just play characters. And he would not only recite the lines perfectly, just like a tape recorder, but he'd emote through the characters. That's where we understood that he's growing emotionally through these exchanges. Okay, so he's 23 years old now. I want to go to a clip from a New York Times documentary showing a conversation with Owen. Let's hear from that. First, I'm going to take your stick. No, no, not my stick. Hi, where are you going? I'm going back. And then off he goes. Yeah. To do what? To fulfill his destiny. I'm proud of my dad. He helped me through my life like Mufasa helped Simba, even though Mufasa was tragically killed by Scar. What did Mufasa say to Simba? So whenever you feel alone, just remember that those kings will always be there to guide you. And so will I. Wow. I know. It brings, it brings tears to my eyes yeah. thinking that this is... There, there are moments of clarity in this, yeah. and, then, and then he gets into the character again. Yeah, he comes in and out of it. And that's how he got his speech back, and he learned to read by reading credits. And this passes over years, and so now we're at a point where he can lead and we mostly follow. And even the folks at Disney have said, he understands these movies better than we do, and we wrote them, we made them. And so that conversation is one that he's having with them, but what's fascinating is that autistic spectrum kids across the country are approaching us now, saying, I have an affinity, a passion, like Owen does, and I see in it the whole world, the world in a grain of sand. I can make sense of the world through it, and it's an extraordinary orchestral moment of kids who have been left behind in America saying, I am more than what I appear. That's what Owen says now. He, he uses the line from Aladdin. I'm an unpolished gem. I'm not a nobody. 
I am more than I appear. And I think that's something that we can now see in so many kids in America. It's these, these, these children that we have not been able to understand, and slowly but surely we are understanding that they are more emotional and more powerful than the rest of and us. And the fact is we all show our best selves through our passions, and that's what this Left Behind community of kids has teach, is teaching us now. And that's what your book talks about as well. Life animated a story of sidekicks, heroes, and autism. By the way, you're going to be in San Diego October the 17th in Escondido at the California Center for Performing Arts of Escondido. Uh, tell me about that really quick. We have about 10 seconds. Yeah, here. yeah. It's going to be a great celebration. We're going to run clips. We're going to sing songs. There's a big orchestra that's going to play. It's going to support Terry, which handles kids and adults like Owen and gives them pathways to better lives. It's an extraordinary, uh, extraordinary organization, and we'll support them and help them build a new campus. But it'll be a great celebration of story and of imagination. And I think everybody who's anybody should be coming. Ron Suskin, thank you so much for your time this morning. And thank you for sharing your family's journey with us. We'd love to meet Owen. Bring him in. Yes, I, I will. No doubt. Okay, thanks, Heather. Thanks, Ron. Let's get over to Kimmy.